this is Reporters Take. I'm Sakshi Batra and with me is my colleague Kamalika Ghosh and we are here to discuss uh, the report released by Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goel right yesterday and this is on the boosting of exports. Thanks a lot Kamalika for joining in. Sakshi. Well, this report has been prepared and submitted by the high level advisory group to the Commerce Ministry. Uh, so first up, tell us and explain to us what are the broad highlights of this report? So Sakshi, uh, this is a high level advisory group that was uh, constituted by the Commerce Ministry to you know understand ways and methods to boost India's ex uh, exports and suggest uh, recommendations for achieving uh, India's uh, share of exports at one USD one trillion yeah. uh, to the GDP. Yeah. So the the report basically suggests ways to you know uh, boost India's exports in merchandise uh, trade in the in services trade and also how should India go about uh, dealing with its bilateral uh, uh, trade deals and uh, you know it, uh, uh, relations uh, inter-country relations so these are the broad contours of the uh, report that was submitted uh, that was released by Piyush Goel yesterday. Right, Kumarika, now also we also understand that from the last couple of months that we have been receiving the high frequency data that actually suggests that India's exports are not in a very good position right, right now. They have been shrinking and that is a cause of a concern right, right now. Right. Even though the imports have also been decreasing, which is a good uh, thing, but also the exports right. have not risen. So that's right. a pain point right now. Right. So what regards to what with regards to boosting of exports has the committee really recommended in this? So report? as we know, uh, uh, Sakshi, that we for you know for trade related credit there are the exim banks that have that are that that provide credit to uh, traders sure. for international trade yeah. so the policy has some interesting uh, you know observations with regard to exim banks like it uh, says that uh, it at least it suggests that uh, the capital base of uh, these exim banks uh, could be enhanced yeah. it also says that you know the borrowing limit of these exim banks could be uh, you know made 20 times to from what it is presently which is at 10 times of their uh, net owned funds. Sure. So, and these could be done with the broader uh, uh, board level uh, permissions and uh, necessary uh, formalities that are required. It also suggests that you know uh, that the government should uh, sort of help and support uh, these uh, exim banks in uh, acquiring or creating assets uh, right. which are uh, you know important in in uh, uh, in the uh, as a as strategic. Uh, assets for the right. country. Right, right. So these are the uh, sort of uh, recommendations that the uh, reports comes up with in terms of uh, what uh, these exim banks can do. Uh, to enhance the exports right. in the country yeah. as well. Right. right. Now, Kamaliko, also talking about the free trade agreements. Now, India has a lot of bilateral trade relations with a whole lot of countries. We are amidst, us, uh, you know, in this kind, we, we are sitting at a backdrop right. when the US China trade relations right. or the talks are happening. We are also sitting at the backdrop of uh, when the RCEP negotiations right. have been taking place. So, amidst all this, uh, what does the report really highlight about FTAs and how should India really be going about uh, all of that now? So, the the most important thing that the report suggests and even uh, the commerce minister had yesterday very categorically uh, reiterated that India, while it uh, enters into FTAs with any country, it should really keep national interests and uh, national concerns yeah. as its primary uh, motive behind getting into these uh, FTAs and not really political expediencies and political uh, uh, Concerns. These should not be the driving factors behind India uh, signing any FTA with whichever country it may be. Uh, then another interesting observation that uh, these report, this report makes is, you know, the need to suggest, create an institutional mechanism yeah. where, in which stakeholders from the industry can, you know, sh their suggestions can be taken before going into uh, consultations these, should yes, be done basically before, before going entering into these FTAs. There should also be some provisions of, you know, uh, letting the industry know beforehand that, you know, these are, you know, these are the areas or these are the FTAs that India is planning to uh, get into, so that, you know, they get the time to and there, make there is more preparedness yeah, as well. Yeah, and they have the provisions for uh, sort of making uh, adjustments uh, so that they don't have to bear a lot of costs while changing from one uh, sort of set set of rules. 
insights to the other. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Anka Malika, for sharing all these insights. Well, the report has been submitted, and the, the Commerce and the Industry Minister Piyush Goyal also highlighted that uh, the report also highlights the fact that how India can become a more attractive investment destination going forward. Uh, the report also has made recommendations which could help us uh, achieve the exports uh, or to raise the exports to the level of one trillion US dollars to the GDP as well. And that is what this aim is of this report as well. And these are the kind of recommendations when the government will be following them, the industry will also be following them. And uh, we will for sure see an improvement in the exports going ahead uh, following these kind of recommendations as well. Thanks a lot for joining us in this edition of Reporters Take. And do stay logged on to moneycontrol.com for more news and updates. Thanks for watching. Thank you.